Welcome, this is the Algebra 1 end of course practice test number 3, question number 14. So in this question we're going to do a rational expression. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it in a, a functionally mathematic way uh, in just uh, initially. And then near the end I'll give you a little warning and tell you that if you have any mathematical integrity you probably want to turn it off, but you can still sort of get the answer even if you don't know what to do here. It's kind of like your punch out uh, last attempt, last gasp way to solve it. But anyway, let's do it the mathematically appropriate way. So I'm going to take x squared minus 2x over x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now in the top I have a common factor of x, so I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. I end up with x and x minus 2. On the bottom there is no common factor, so what I'm going to do is uh, sort of factor the quadratic. I need to do a factor list for 8. So 8 and 1, 2 and 4. What I'm looking for, because of the way the signs are set up, this sign right here is a negative, which means the signs of my answers are going to be different. If it was a plus there, my answers would be the same, and the sign here would tell me that they're either both plus or both minus. But in the case of this problem, this one being minus, regardless of what this is, means that my answers are going to be opposite signed, so x plus and x minus. The only thing I'm going to use the plus for in this situation is to tell me where the bigger of the two factors go. I also know if those signs are different, I need to subtract the factors to get this 2 right here. So 1 and 8, well if I subtract it either way, it's either going to give me 7 or negative 7. 4 and 2 can get me to a 2. I want to make sure it's positive 2, so my choices are 4 minus 2 or 2 minus 4. 1 gives me negative, 1 gives me positive, so I need to make sure that my plus is in front of my 4. So now that I have them factored out in a nice reasonable way, I'm going to eliminate any, uh, thing, any terms that end up on the top and the bottom because it's a division. So uh, a number divided by itself is 1. Same with x minus 2 and x minus 2. Those cancel out. So I'm left with the final answer of x over x plus 4. But we're not finished yet. Uh, now I need to look at restrictions in the domain. Now the domain values would be your x values, so in a situation like this they'd be on the bottom, kind of like you do slope, you put the x's on the bottom. So I need to do, uh, I need to look at the two terms that I had for my domain value at the bottom and set them equal to zero because I can't divide a fraction by zero and not end up in an undefined situation. So in that case all the numbers are uh, this is a functional answer as long as I don't pick one that's a restriction in the domain or a number that would give me a zero in my denominator. So I'm going to uh, set x plus 4 equal to 0 and x minus 2 equal to 0. I'm just going to solve these like I would anything else and end up with x is equal to negative 4 and x is equal to positive 2. These are the restrictions in my domain. So I can say with relative confidence that the answer to number 14 is A. Now, if you have no ma love of mathematics or don't want to worry about mathematical integrity, you can still get this one right. Or really if you just get nervous on test day. This question has an x. Uh, x is the only variable. I mean x squared and x. But there isn't an x and a y component to it. So if I sort of only look at the answers in the front, I can narrow it down and then I can use a little uh, another little trick to get the restrictions that I'm looking for. I'm going to try to bring out not that this my calculator. Um, it, what I can do and it's just a trick based on the way that the calculator works graphs is I need to check my value for x and it is equal to 0. I don't want it to be equal to 0, so I need to change it. Go into your window if whatever you set your negative and positive versions of x, max, and min, once you, so right now it's 10 and negative 10, and not respectively, I need to graph something here, 5x, whatever, and graph it. That locks in the value for x when I do this little trick. So there you go. Now, from here, what I can do is actually punch in the exact question. So I'm going to go in and make a fraction out of this. I had alpha and y equals to bring up the fraction menu. And I'm just going to type in x squared minus 2x. And then on the bottom, I'm going to type in x squared. It would help if I typed in x, wouldn't it? x squared, and now I need to delete this squared, plus 2x minus and I'm going to try to delete this little part out here so it all looks nice and pretty. Now I can hit enter 
and I get 5 over 7. What I'm going to look for in my answer choices, these in the front here, is 5 over 7, because if the number matches, it's actually one of the possible answers. So I'm going to type in alpha y equals and pick a fraction, and then I'm going to do x over x plus 4. Oh look, it's 5 over 7. So I know anything that has x and x plus 4 in it is a possible answer. So in this one, I'm dealing with a or b. If I try x over x minus 4, it doesn't work out because of the way that the x is set up. So I'll go in and just show you that x over x minus 4 does not give you 5 sevenths. In fact, it gives you 5 over 3, and that's not what you want. Now, from here, what I'm going to do is use the restrictions in my domain part. Now, I know that that means the bottom can't be 0. They both have a 2 in them, so that's not a deciding factor. I need to compare 0 versus negative 4. All I'm going to do is plug those numbers in for my x terms and the denominator, and it can tell me whether it does equal 0 or not. So I'll try 0 first because we know that that one shouldn't work. So x all I'm doing is put it in parentheses and then square it, because if it's negative, it'll give you the wrong answer if you don't put the square on the outside. Plus 2, 0, minus 8. If it's a restriction, the answer will end up being 0, but you'll notice it's not. So b is not a possible answer. So I'm just going to show you that negative 4 does work using this method, and then I'm going to be done. So I've got it all typed in, and this should be a negative 4. I don't know why I didn't put it in this negative 4. I wasn't thinking was probably the reason. And I hit enter, and it's 0. If you type in 2, it gives you 0. This part matches in the front, so I can once again say that A is the correct answer. So that's it, a mathematically appropriate version, a totally mathematically not legitimate way to do it, and uh, I hope that can get you somewhere.